I'm Sergeant Shane Mitchell with the Climate County Sheriff's Office. Uh, born and raised here in Climate Falls. Um, I'm getting old, I'm 48 years old, so you can count the years on that when I was born. Um, family, been married for 30 years. Two daughters, got two grandchildren, one grandchild on the way. Um, started my career with the Sheriff's Office as a reserve in 2000. Got hired on full time a year later in 2001. So right now I've got 20 plus years in with the Sheriff's Department. In that time, uh, I've become, and now I'm a sergeant, it's been three, three and a half years as a sergeant now. Before that, just a road deputy, but advanced in training aspects as a defensive taxes instructor, uh, firearms instructor, SWAT instructor, so I'm in every training aspect is also as well as a driving instructor for the pit maneuver for high speed chases and stuff. So I've involved in my career, which takes quite a while in that aspect. So now I'm at that point in my career where I'm trying to get young, the younger generation or the new generation coming in to start taking over the training aspects, which is a very big difficulty for me at this time with this generation that's coming in. That's my hardest goal for right now because I'm in charge of our whole training department for our department. So I have to keep everybody's training records up from year to year. And you have a three year requirement. And with the COVID that's now in place, a lot of trainings are not in person. They're all online webinars. So getting that coverage is pretty tough. Um, me wanting to be in law enforcement, I looked out as wanting to help people. I like solving crimes, doing criminal investigations, from retaining fingerprints, shoe prints at crime scenes, logging those in, and finding the perpetrator to solve that crime and get the victim's property back, which is sometimes rare, but sometimes you do get the, the property back and that victim is very happy and what you've done for them. The Sheriff's Office, what we have in our department compared to the city and OSP, we have a lot of outside things that we can encompass, which we have search and rescue, forest divisions, marine divisions, dive, which is small boat and dive rescue, as well as patrol, civil, and now that we have taken over animal control, we do the dogs, large animal investigations. So we have a lot of different areas that people can move into other than other agencies like a city or OSP. So we're, we have a vast variety that you can go into. We also have school resource officers and that's kind of what I'm doing here at KCC. I'm contracted. I do all the school issues on campus as well as my school resource officers at the elementary, junior high, and high school. So they I have three officers that are stationed in those schools that deal with any criminal issues or matters that are involving um, due to violence or vandalism in those schools. So that is their main priority. Um, so it's, it's, law enforcement is a different era. It, it'll change you from being a very open person, gentle, and once you get into law enforcement, it does change you. It'll make you a hard person because you see a lot of things that you don't see in the normal life. And you got to find avenues to get out of that. Like now I have grandkids. So when I was a trainer for our department, people thought I was very mean. But now I have kids, grandkids. They told me I should have grandkids like 10 years ago because it made me softer. I just tell them I have more patience now. Um, so it's, it's involving, but technology is changing. That's one of my downfalls with law enforcement. When I started, we had computers, we just had to type. Now I'm got three computer screens in front of me in my desk, plus one in my car. So technology is coming around. We used to dictate our reports. Now we have to type them all out. So it takes a lot of time. We're not on the road as much as we used to be. Uh, patrolling, where's behind the computer desk doing all of our own typing, entering, where we used to have transcriptionists to do that for us. So it, it's a different world out there and it's changing drastically fast. And 
the younger and older generation like me, if we're having to change with times, sometimes it takes us a while to get caught up. But it's happening. I got secretaries and my own co-workers that help me get through my issues with computers. Um, do we have any questions for me from the, the group here? Well, I would ask you, Shane, um, just with the, at the time of experiences you've had to the present, where things add to that, give you a bigger picture and a more dynamic as far as just interaction and things along those lines. How things have changed? Well, yeah, overall. You know, the, the principles are probably still the same. You know, it's right or wrong, you know, kind of stuff like that. But the a manner of dealing with it, I guess, in that respect. Uh, one, of the, one of the biggest things that we're seeing in law enforcement now, uh, we're calling it de-escalation. Um, used to, we used to go hands-on a lot faster than we do now. So now if we have a, an armed person with a knife, we try to take every avenue we can to de-escalate that. Bring in KBBH, um, we'll create a distance between us. So if we're in a room like this, We'll get to the farthest corner. We'll put objects in front of us to try to talk that person down before we have to go hands on or use our mace, uh, bean bags, uh, tasers. So we have to use whatever we can to de escalate that before we take it to the next level. So we always have uh, use of force. On the street, civilians, if you get into a fight, you guys have to use equal amount of force. You can't escalate. So if you guys get in a fist fight, one guy grabs a bat, that guy has to grab a bat. So it has to be equal. Where law enforcement, we can always go one step above. So if it's a fist fight, we can go to the next level, our OC spray, our taser. If they grab a weapon, now it's a contained, considered a dangerous or deadly weapon, then we can go one step above that, which comes into lethal force. So we have a lot of things that we have to think about in split second and how we're going to resolve that and how to get out of that. What's that? A deadly or dangerous weapon? If yeah. we, we, basically, if you grab a gun, you have to shoot them once. Yes. And it's, in the time I've been here, I have not had to pull the trigger and, and my career by the time I retire, I don't want to have to. Okay. I asked these questions before. Yep. A lot of the questions that you you uh the point how many you uh, talked about earlier. I asked you that way back when when we made it talk on the road. Um he, he's had the opportunity to to look in my car. I've got less less lethal bean bags. Um I carry an AR, I have saps, I have bolt guns, because I am on the SRT team, which I'm our overwatch, consider our sniper. So for me, I sneak in places people never know where I'm at or how long I've been there. So, go ahead. Do you think this year will get better control over the illegal marijuana growers? That is a big topic right now for our department because we have the illegal use of the waters, the contamination of all the chemicals that they're using. But for us, it's the number of deputies that we have and right now we are putting in a process for a plan for my because I, I oversee three RS SROs and for the summer plan we are looking at possibly that is all they're working making sure they're in compliance and making sure that they're all licensed and regulated and trying to work on that illegal grow operations because the, we worked basically the last Three months of the summer, we were nonstop doing search warrants, pulling marijuana plants, processing, but we didn't have the number of people to do that. So we, we are working on that. Yeah, because I know my nephew, he's a sheriff and stuff, and I know he's been busy with a, a lot going on in the town and stuff, so and everything. Yep, and it was all over the county. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. When it comes to someone maybe uh, you know, trying to get in, uh, you know, maybe like try to like start pursuing this kind of career, like in the like climate, 
county or whatever, just like law enforcement in general, like what exactly is it kind of like, like how is it, like I mean like, for example, do, as far as like, is it one of the things where like, I would need to have a separate job while I'm doing training in order to pay for my food, so what kind of resources, like, like what, how does it, have, does it cost money to train to be a, so, so you're wanting to get into law enforcement like as a reserve status first? I'm just curious how the whole getting into it works at all. Like, I don't even know. So, so how it works with, for me, um, I want to get into it. And I, I tell people, if you want to get into law enforcement, start off in the reserve program first. Because law enforcement is not for everybody. So if you get into the reserve program, and I oversee the reserve program for our department. I put you through, I think it's about just under 400 hours of hands-on training and in classroom. So what that encompasses use of force, um, defensive tactics, case law, criminal law. Uh, we go to range. We put you through driving courses. And it's not, you have to pass all those encompasses as well as a background investigation, a psych evaluation before you can become a reserve. And that's the same, basically it's the same process for a full-time position. You have to go through the testing process and so forth. But what, when you're a reserve, it does cost you money out of your pocket because you'll have to buy your, your duty gear, your firearms. And then once you become a full-time deputy, that's when you get your equipment given to you by the office. Oh. And then, as a reserve, if you get accepted, you, it's a minimum of 20 hours a month that you provide to the office. That's doing ride-alongs, that going to games, but you're not stuck by yourself in your car. While I'm with a, as a reserve, you are with a partner, a full-time deputy, so you're being shadowed, you're learning the steps, so we're not just throwing you out. Uh, now you got to learn. It, it's a lot of civil liability that comes on that person. What about the training? Does the training cost money? The training is no money on you. It's all through the departments given to you free. So it will we'll work with report writing. Like any requirements to like qualify for starting training? To, to start the training, you have to take a written test, a physical test. A physical test is considered it's an ORPAT. It's five minutes and 30 seconds. So basically it's a agility test. It's a lot of running up and down off the ground, mm -hmm. a push-pull machine. You have to drag a dummy. Mm -hmm. and it's all timed. And then how I'm working out with our department, if you're applying for the reserves, and if you're within a close range, I give you two weeks to make up that time, and I still take you through the process. I don't get how long do you have a record? Uh, felony records are generally eliminated from the process. Um, I know some departments in other states are starting to waive those if it's a minor. Um, I have a record for uh, assault, but it was a misdemeanor. But I was able to work through that, and they did hire me. So just because you have a misdemeanor crime doesn't keep you from getting into law enforcement. You know, nowadays, not this law enforcement, any kind of job, they don't, they don't hire a felon. Uh, some do. So law enforcement is the, the tough one when they go through the background. Wow. So there's stipulations where they say, no, that, that felony is a no-go. I went through my church to get a job at Safe Man Fred Meyer. Uh, I had a record. And they said no. No, I got the job. You got the job. Yeah. I couldn't sleep during the night. I, this is my first job that I had, ever had. At night, I worked a graveyard. I couldn't sleep during the day, so I eventually I just fell off and started smoking weed. And after that, I, I'm the type of person that I get higher and higher, and I, I uh, started uh, doing that. So, oh, you got you. Yeah. yeah I, I have job. a question. Okay. Uh, in your day-to-day -day life, how hard do you find it to deal with your coworkers? <laughs> you got me on recording. That's a hard one. <laughs> um, coworkers are tough, especially being a supervisor. Um, some people work 
harder out of getting out of doing the job instead of just doing the job. So you have to oversee them, make sure they're doing their job correctly. So sometimes you, you can fight with a coworker all the time, but when it comes to sit situations where they need help, it doesn't matter, you're always there to help them. Um, so how does one get involved with the search and rescue and the dive crew? Uh, to get into search and rescue or dive, um, just go to our office up on the up by the jail, up on Vandenberg, 3300 Vandenberg. There's an application form. Just fill that out, and that goes to the search and rescue coordinator or dive coordinator. Really? Yep. Thank you. Search, search and rescue is a good, Something good thing. Very in. Yeah. yeah, search. That, and then we have a lot of volunteers that go into the search and rescue, right. that then, like and then come into. Uh, the reserve program. So I recommend you like being out in the woods, swimming. Yeah. Th there's okay. or boats. I, I know they do train quite often, and anytime there's a search or a missing kid or adults in the woods or even out in the residential area, search and rescue gets called because we will utilize them either going from house to house or going out in the woods. Definitely something we do. Yep. Thank you. Anybody else got questions? I think, I was just going to say, I think that that reserve experience would be invaluable overall for just the perspective, the discipline, the structure, yep. and all that kind of stuff that goes with it. I give I know, it gives you a big insight. Yeah. Because I do have people, they want to be a cop their entire life yeah. growing up. And then once they get into the reserve program, they go through it and they, they finally realize that this isn't for me. And they'll go through the process, and then they'll they'll get out of it because they didn't see it. Or we have them go through the reserve program, get hired full time, and being from reserve to full time is a big liability. So what happens is now they've gone back to the reserve program and removed themselves from full time because they seen that was just for them. So I, I recommend going reserves first. Super. There's just uh, there's an emotional maturity comes with this kind of work, you know, as far as being able to stay balanced. I mean, it's not perfect, but it's just the idea of being able to interact in a place where it's so much different all the time. It's not like customer service at a bank or something like that. Yep. There's pretty many variables, you know? Yeah, he, you changed. For me, I was at that point in my career where the, all I did was the road. When the school resource or officer position opened up here in Sergeant, I put in for that because it was a time for a change for me. Me, I'm enjoying being here at KCC. I've got to meet a whole lot of new different people. I'm not dealing with just the bad people all the time anymore. I meet and talk with people on campus every day now. So it brought me back down to another level, being able to just to communicate and talk and socialize instead of just going from call to call, just looking for the bad people. So, I'm enjoying it here. Hopefully, I can finish out my career here. So, we have any other questions? But my door is always open. Any anybody on campus comes in at any time. Um, see me driving around, walking on campus. Wave me over. Oh, yeah, talk to me. I'll I'll sit there and talk with you as long as you want. Um, I'll show you the stuff in the car. Uh, he's he's he looked in my car. car. There's not much room in there. <laughs> I've got about every <laughs> I've got about every tool that you can think of in my car. Um, I do and enjoy doing the training for our department, and I do bring a lot of training here. You'll see a lot of patrol cars here during the year. I put on trainings for them, and I bring other agencies in here. You guys are located right next to the jail, right? Right. Uh, there's two, two, there's two story building that's going to be the parole and probation where the single right. on the right hand side. But just go inside, ask for an application for search and rescue or dive yeah. um, because we got small boat rescue as well. So. And it pays off to try to cross the road here and go in free. How does that work? Uh, juvenile apartment has their own department, but they have part-time services there too. So if you're going to school and you want a part-time job, 
you go there and app, apply for it, and you can work nights there, three, four hours a night. And you go there or you apply online? Uh, yeah, I believe you have to go there and apply okay. because they have their own process there. Okay. Full-time, I know they do put online, but part-time through the department. But I know they're always looking for people to sit and watch and work with kids there. So, um, so who makes you get into the law enforcement? Was that one of your younger days the dream? So when I was younger, I was wanting to be a fishing game. Oh, so. Yeah, so I wanted to do tribal fishing game, but that didn't work. So I wanted to, uh, the fishing game is doing their hunting regulation oh, okay. crimes and stuff. Okay. So it, it didn't work out for me. So then I got into the reserve program. I had a friend that was law enforcement. So got in the reserves, enjoyed that, and wanted to pursue it to full time. And what? I hanging around the police department. What? I got, got <laughs> strikes and the. Uh, the bars. Yeah, and stuff on by the, the stars and stuff. Yeah. Uh, professional. We just Frank Bowen. Yeah. One thing that's changed when I first applied, started applying for jobs in the early 2000s, you would have a thousand plus people applying for jobs in one area. Now we have issues getting 10, 15 people to apply for jobs for law enforcement. So the people wanting to be law enforcement officers has dwindled down drastically. It's, it's hard to get them. Even, yeah. even reserve. Because of the media and what's going on in the world today? It, it's tough to say. Um, a lot of people, uh, it, it's a lot of work. Yeah. And with the, what's going on in the world now, it's, it's tough. Yeah. Um, right now we have laws changing every year and basically me as a training coordinator I'm having to send those new laws out to my deputies on a weekly basis now and you can't keep up on them. you can't remember all the changes in in the laws so it's it is very tough to lock himself out <clears throat> Some of this stuff becomes like you, you look the wrong way for something, and it becomes you know, a litigation thing or something. Yeah. And then there's a the kind of, not so much that it was a light open front here before, but it was just that it, it gets layered for so much stuff. Yeah. And, and being in law enforcement, we're we're in the limelight all the time, yeah. and and some people don't like it. Right. It's like. Videotaping. Um, I'm subject to videotaping at any time by anybody on the road, as long as they're not trying to conceal it. So any anything that we do, we're in eyesight. We can be on Facebook or YouTube at any time. So we have to be able to watch what we're doing at all times, and we're not doing anything wrong to violate somebody's civil rights. Let me ask something else, Shane. Um, I, I get property tax. So within that, the, is, the, is the funding adequate to the city police, but even county police, as compared to that, it seems like it's a huge amount of money for the fire department. And very little goes to life, you know, so on and so forth. It's, it seems disproportionate based upon, you know, just the, so, I don't know, even the, the, you know, the activity of it, the amount of work that gets put in. So per capita, per person for the sheriff's office, we are about 20 deputies short. So right now, our, our minimum staffing for patrol right now is three deputies per shift for the whole county. Yeah. And we're running three deputies for 72, about 7,200 square miles. So how to show that, everybody knows where Highway 58 is. Mm -hmm. uh, the ski lodge, that is our northwestern boundary and then lapine the double passageway highway 31 that's going to be our boundary there to the state line um, quartz mountain going towards lakeview so we have a lot of area that we have to cover 
And sometimes you'll start a shift and never see your partner until the next day. A backup for us can be over an hour away, depending on where we're at in the county or the weather. So. Well, do you have access? Is there supportive access to helicopters that are around you or other things that go around that are available locally or nearby? What's, what's your radio contact like with the guys that fly over? That fly over, like. Yeah. Do you have a line open with so we we have a reserve. Uh, he, he's a very big asset to us. Um, he has a helicopter. He has fixed wings. He has a water boat or a water plane. And now he just recently purchased a helo. And he is able to utilize that for us for pursuits, search and rescue missions, or if we have a search uh, SRT call out or something drastic, he can load up guys and get them to places in timely manner if we need them. Right. So he, and his name's Ed Langerfield, and he, he's a very big asset to us for that kind of stuff. But, and it's all out of his pocket, to just for law enforcement alone. Um, I don't have my other phone with me, but I just did a promotional video with his Hilo in the snow, flying around, uh, taking photos, getting out, m doing maneuvers in the snow. And we just did that one in December. So that, that was pretty fun. Good. Is learning how to operate those vehicles part of the training? Yes, we have to, you have to go through a EVOC course um, in classroom time and then they take you out on the drive where you have to be able to maneuver the steering wheel plus your, your radio, learn how to brake, accelerate, in and out of curves so you're spending about a week and a half at the academy just going over driving and pursuit um, driving fast is a big liability for us uh, you'll see us running lights and sirens all the time i don't it through my career when i first started and that was the joy i wanted to drive fast lights and sirens but as you go through your career it's like why am I running lights and siren to something that's cold? I know it's not in progress. And how many people I've put at risk from point A to point B? Because you you guys have seen it. You'll see a car running code or lights and sirens, and people don't pull over. Or once they do pull over, they go left, right, cutting other people off. So in, in time, through people's careers in law enforcement, they'll slow down on rushing to the calls. But when you first get hired, that's it's a rush. But after time, it goes away. And pursuit policies for us anymore, we've kind of gone away from a lot of pursuits. Unless it's a major crime or a major felony, we'll start the pursuit and discontinue within a short distance. We got the crime if we know who it is. We'll discontinue, write the report, submit it to the DA's office and issue warrants for him. We'll catch him another time because you can generally find out who it is sooner or later or catch him sooner or later. So you got to weigh the risk and liability of injuring somebody or yourself. And do you guys still got a sheriff that goes out to Chelequin? Uh, I'm right now during the school year, my SRO, he is stationed at Chilliquin High School. Um, right now, as besides him, we try to get a deputy up there that does extra patrol every day or every other day, either during the day or evening, because we have a contract with Chilliquin. Well, I, I thought that. I didn't know if it was still ongoing, yep. with him or not. And I believe we're 40 hours a month contracted with them, and we succeed that. Now, the crime rate has went down a little bit out there, hasn't it? I don't hear too much as bad as it was a couple of years ago when I was there. Yeah, a lot of the people, some of the ones that were causing issues have moved out uh -huh. or had passed on. But we still have our, our circumstances up there, but you don't hear it as much anymore. Do you guys have any issues with mixing units? Mixing like units? You have five or six squad cars to get together. Do you get jumbled up with the guys from Merrill? So we we assist. So every if there's a major incident, it 
then we need backup. It doesn't matter if it's city, state, county, Merrill, Malin. Well, um, we're the majority backup for Merrill, Malin PD. So if you, we'll go down there if they need assistance at any time. So city, we'll bump into the city. City comes into the county. So there's an open relationship for that. State yep, state police will come in. I'm all for it. We need help. Come. Everybody's quiet. <laughs> Sorry, you knew most of the stuff you already said. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not scared to ask you. you know, why are you talking? You have a lot of knowledge, right? About the surrounding, you know, you said Merrill. Uh, uh, Chilliland, yep. uh, all around the county, counties, uh, county, you know, but if you guys get a call, you guys, we got to go. Yeah. Like Merrill I think that's terrific. Merrill Malin, if they're not on duty, we're the ones that are going to be taking that call. So we, we've got to know the geographical area. Now, when these fires this last summer, was it very hard to get people to leave their homes? Some did, some were adamant they weren't leaving. Um, and we can't force people to leave. We can recommend that they do. But once they leave, we can restrict them from coming in if it's a level three area. But we'll give them every opportunity to get whatever they need to get out. Quit. How much would the equipment be to do it yourself? For me, if I, if I think I need it for my job, I've spent thousands of dollars on equipment from binoculars to scopes to winter gear. I asked that too, remember when I asked you about Yeah, like, like I said earlier, you name it, I have it in my patrol car, basically. Well, I'm talking about like um, in the beginning where you have to buy your own gear. Uh, when you first get hired on a, a reserve, basically you have to buy full duty gear. You have to buy your pistol, your leather, uh, we provide the uniforms. Uh, you have to buy your own boots. But once you get hired full time and you didn't go through the reserve process or vice versa, we'll provide you with a firearm at that time. We'll provide you with clothing. The only thing you have to buy is your boots at that time. But anything additional that you want to carry in your car or have, then you have to purchase it. Uh, we'll provide AR rifles, shotguns, but if you want to purchase your own and use it, we'll allow you to. And then you have to basically show that you're qualified on it and it's safe. And then once we sign off, you can carry your own rifle on duty. I carry my own. But if you get into a, a situation where shooting has occurred, you, we let our deputies know you're, you're going to lose that firearm for a year, two years during the court process. Um, this is kind of a quick question, but... Are revolvers out of the picture anymore compared to pistol types? Um, everybody in law enforcement now is carrying semi-automatics. The revolvers are they're in the past now. They're, they're, they're ancient history now. <laughs> are you responsible for buying your uh, ballistic? What's that? Are you responsible for buying all your ballistic armor? Is that supplied by the... Nope. It's all, ballistics all supplied by the department, even through the reserve program. What we'll provide it all because it all has to be regulated and right, uh, and they expire. Blood and I can't remember how many years, but then our department has a, a cycle. We just keep rotating deputies through, get a new vest. Yeah. Okay. Um, what a good question. Yeah, I'm all for questions. <laughs> That's the easy part. <laughs> All right. So I've actually known you for a while now, long time, due to my uh, stepdad and stuff. But uh, you used to spend a lot more time on the and stuff. Yep. Out the woods. So is that kind of light down for you these days? Or? Uh, I'm the type of deputy I can't just stay in one area. Right. So if I'm in patrolling in town and it's quiet, I'm going to jump out to the outlining areas that people don't really get to see us all the time. Nice. Yeah. And what, what's odd for me, when I first started this career, I used to drive around the neighborhoods, and I just did it. Uh, we just had uh, Martin Luther King Day. 
So it was a day that didn't have school. I worked patrol that day. It was a nice day. I'm driving around the neighborhoods. I did not see any kids outside playing. I used to, I used to stop and play basketball with them when I first started. But I don't see that no more. I've seen a lot of elderly people out walking around. Yeah. And if I see them, I'll stop and talk to them. So. Yeah, I always stop and talk to you guys out the woods. Yeah. Stuff. yeah I, and I'll stop. I don't even. Yeah. They, I'm the type of officer that just because I'm pulling over doesn't mean I'm going to run you. Right. Uh, I'm just there to communicate and socialize and visit. And then off I go. And that's kind of what I, I do here now. When I first started here, I was kind of a. I'd walk through the hallways and people would just kind of go the other way and, and veer around me. But now, after, since I've been here, now I got people stopping and talking to me in the hallways and say, shaking my hand and saying hi, which is good for the school to, to get that bond with law enforcement. Hmm. All right. No, I yeah. Well, we're glad to have you. What's that? We, we are glad to have you there. I'm glad to be here. Yeah. And you'll, you'll see me in and out right now because we're, right now with our department, uh, we're pretty short staffed. Oh, that's what I haven't seen. So I'm here as much as I can be, but I'm having to back up or handle calls on the road because the calls are picking up. And the weather's nice. Yeah. So people are out and about and causing problems. Right. You know, my aunt here, he spent 20 years in the Marines, and you know, he became a sheriff in the time of all. And, you know, he really likes what he does, too. You know, he enjoys his job. Yep. I, I enjoy it still, to this day. Even though times have changed and things get tougher, I still enjoy coming to work. But, you know, you've seen a lot in the Marines, you know, being, you know, in combat and stuff. And, I was really surprised that he took that role, that he did. Yeah. One thing in law enforcement, every day is different. Mm -hmm. You you never know what the day is going to bring you. Sometimes it's ugly, sometimes it's happy. But every call is different. Good. All right. Well, if there's any questions anyone has, change it here this evening across the hall. Yep. Yep. Yeah, Four thirty. I'll be here <laughs> again. All right. Or if you want to send send an email to me, and I'll be glad to print it. Mm -hmm. Try to read it. Yep. <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah. Thanks for having me, guys. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do you happen to have business cards? In my office. <laughs> uh, will you so, read some this evening? I'll be. I'll bring. I'll bring some this morning. I'll do that. I'll bring you a stack. You want to make more? Drop them off. Yep. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Dave. Don't have too much fun in class today. <laughs> have a good day. Yeah, you too.